public health professionals work to prevent and control the spread of infectious diseases in the population, so they have many critical questions to answer. Mathematical modeling is a research method that can be used to find answers to some of these questions. Mathematical modeling uses computer simulations to represent how a disease is spread in a virtual space. This allows researchers to run virtual trials of real-world scenarios. In this introduction, let's look at the mathematical modeling process in more detail. Mathematical modeling can be simplified to the following seven steps. Step 1. First, we need to decide on a research question. The question is very important, as it will determine the type of mathematical model used and the data required. To illustrate the mathematical modeling process, we'll work with a sample research question. What is the optimal screening strategy to decrease syphilis in the population? Step 2. Next, we need to understand the natural history of the disease, including transmission and immunity development to create the model. Step 3. A model describes the different courses an infection can take, taking into consideration the various factors that may influence its spread. For infectious diseases, the model typically used is a transmission dynamics model, capturing the nonlinear dynamics of transmission. For our example, decreasing syphilis in the population, our model will illustrate how different interventions can affect the spread of syphilis between susceptible and infected peoples. Step 4. What data do we need for the model to answer our research question? Quantitative data inputs could include biological studies, public health surveillance records, health administration records, results from clinical trials, and to help set the context and assumptions about the disease, we also use expert opinions and patient experiences. Step 5. For our example, let's imagine that researchers create three virtual trial worlds to answer their question, World 0, World A, and World B. World 0 would represent a real-world strategy where all people presenting with symptoms are screened for syphilis. This control world is called the base case and is what other virtual trials will be compared against. World A could represent a strategy where screening frequency is increased to every three months for people who have elevated risks, such as those with a previous history of infection. World B could represent a strategy of universal screening where everyone is tested once a year. Step 6. Mathematical modelers can adjust parameters or assumptions and rerun simulations to see whether and how the different assumptions lead to different predictions. Step 7. Once we have run the model, let's say that in World A we see a more rapid decrease in the number of cases of syphilis. Understanding that this strategy, where more frequent screening for a specific subset of the population, has the potential to reduce syphilis more effectively than the World B, a strategy of screening in the whole population, decision makers will have a better idea of the potential impact of an intervention and so better information on how to allocate resources. Mathematical models are used to test what-if experiments and represent simplified versions of a complex system. They will always be limited by how well we understand the biology of the disease, the interactions between people, and consequently, the data used in the model. And because there are so many things that we do not know, the model will always give a range of estimates that reflect these uncertainties. In public health, Modeling is considered to be a time and cost-effective strategy and a valuable research method for helping to make decisions that can improve the health of a population.